Hi guys, it's Barry and we're back with another question on Ask Me Anything. This question deals with school. And uh, so many times we're brought up uh, the question about, love the idea of relocating and uh, I think we can do it. But what really bothers me the most is I have kids in school and I don't want to disrupt them and uh, kind of, you know, get them uprooted into another school in a different set of circumstances and what have you. And, well, that's an excellent question. I, I really do believe it's rather selfish on the parents' side. Um, I'm a big advocate that kindness that comes from the heart without going first through the brain is very dangerous. And that would, uh, at least to me, be an excellent example of it. While I understand you're thinking of what you feel is your child's best interest or in their best interest, uh, kind of my life has really proved to me beyond a shadow of a doubt how incorrect that is. Uh, first off, if your child, no matter how good or how much of the A team they are, if they only speak one language, they're unemployable. And uh, that's, that's just the basic facts of it. Uh, soon you'll find that, in another few years, you'll find that to be all but true in all 50 states as well. Already go to any states on the bordering areas, California, Florida, uh, anywhere across Canada, Eastern Canada, if you don't speak a minimum of two languages, you don't get hired. Um, past experience with that, um, when we have families that visit us on our, uh, our tour, either through uh, DR Escapes or something feels wrong, uh, when that is a question of theirs, and it, I'm finding it very... Um, or they're finding it difficult to understand if they are with their uh, teenage kids or seven, eight. Age is really irrelevant. But as long as the child's old enough to understand, what I'll do is head them off into one of the private schools. And uh, I love doing this because uh, sometimes to help people, you got to appear to be a bit of a jerk uh, if you're telling the truth. And I don't mind that because I tell the truth and it's just always better in the long run. So what we'll do is go to one of the schools and I'll introduce them to the owners or some of the teachers and they're chit-chatting with the parents, having a grand old time. And uh, I'll break off the kids over into another group of kids of their own age and the parents will be, you know, through their eye, looking in the corner. Are they getting along? Are they worried about their little John and Debbie and all their A student? And which is all fine and I understand all this, but it's not accurate. Everything's fine when they're speaking English, when it switches to French, Spanish, or now what many of the private schools are teaching for third language is Northern Chinese. Um, Johnny and Debbie's totally dumbfounded. And that's when I see the look on their face. And what initially these parents looked at as uh, me being a jerk, um, about an hour later over a drink or a coffee, it's like, we understand now what you were doing, and I'll get a pat on the shoulder or something like that. You're trying to give us a wake-up call. You weren't trying to insult our children. And I said, of course. Why would I? Of course. Why would I insult your children? I'm just merely trying to show you something you're not aware of. And it doesn't matter if you agree with it or you don't. You, got, you don't have a horse in this race. This is where the world is. Uh, not where it's going. For the most part, it already is. And it's at that point that they get what I'm trying to describe. Another key figure, and uh, don't go by someone like me that's been in so many different countries, but it's been my experience and almost everybody else that I know, the strongest kids, the most, the kids that are going to survive the best in any circumstance are always the kids that have lived in multiple countries. And I'm going to tell you why. They're not afraid of different ethnic, different colors, different ways of life. They have experience. When all you have is experience in one country and your idea is going to the food court or walking the mall, that's all you have. That doesn't mean the rest of the world works that way. When I meet those children, those are the ones that are petrified to walk down the block without their parents. Those are the ones that are afraid if they see different ethnic, different colors. Those are the ones that live in fear. So, really, who becomes the prisoner over the long term? The one that's not afraid or the one that lives in fear? And 
I found it to be 100% foolproof true, surety, not belief, because belief means doubt, surety. Whenever I meet children that have lived in Canada, Europe, this country, Asia, wherever, in several countries, those are the kids that blend the best, those are the kids that speak more languages, those are the kids that are going to survive this future, and those are definitely the kids that aren't going to crumple like an old cookie when things get a little tough. So I want to get this across to parents. I know you're attempting and you're, you're, you're loving your children. That's not what this is all about here. But even parents cannot share what they do not know themselves. And uh, I recently got that gift, and I'm 60. Uh, my mom's just turned 86, and she was crying on her birthday. And uh, one of the rare times I assumed, which I normally don't do anymore, but I, I assumed something medically was wrong when she was crying on her birthday. And uh, I said, Mom, what's, what's going on? Talk to me. I'm here for you. She said, I'm sorry about all the hard times I ever gave you about trying to give you the best information I had about being in one place, working for a company, working your way up the ladder, graduating that opportunity, and for lack of better words, getting the gold watch. But you see, my mom doesn't know that. I know it meant well from the heart, but that's not how the world functions. So my mom said, Barry, um, you and Leanne, Leanne's my wife, most of you know that already. Barry, you are so rock solid. Uh, I mean, they can drop you out of a tree somewhere over Africa, and three weeks later you'll have a condo with three people working, taking reservations for which branch. She's probably right. Because of all the different experiences I've gained by all these different countries, meeting all these different people, and she finally then just said, a parent loves a child but I understand at 86 and that's why I'm crying a parent can't teach what they do not know themselves so um, if this wakes up a few and if you truly want your children to be as steadfast rock solid as possible consider living in a few countries at least make it mandatory that they speak at least two languages. Hope this helps. And uh, again, I can only say don't make decisions on bad information. So go to the countries or countries of your interest and start planting your kids around and watch. Tell me if what I'm saying isn't true. And then get them educated because it's an international world. And if you want them to survive and be employable, you best understand this is the way it works. It's not a one language country, no matter what you've been taught in your country. And as a matter of fact, every other nation makes it mandatory. At least two languages are spoken before you can graduate high school. So I hope this helps. And um, just keep those questions coming in and we'll address them on... Uh, DR Escapes or somethingfeelswrong.com. So this is Barry and DR saying until next time, bye.